everyone, Christian here, and I was elated to find this entire grove of what I believe to be Libestone Rigida. As we can see here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these growing here in this particular complex. They were recently planted, and if you look over here, you take a profile of Libestone Rigida, profile Libestone Decora. that guy do his thing for a second and so you can see the, the decora has a much droopier leaflet structure where these although they have a similar open crown and a little bit larger leaflets they're a little bit not as they're not as deeply segmented and they do not droop at the ends hence that's why the common name is the ribbon fan palm there so uh these like i guess they were recently planted and i'm going to talk a little bit about, about the marii uh, complex so you have Livestona marii Livestona rigida and Livestona nasmophila so these were all one species at one point, and they were divided into subspecies maybe 30 or 40 years ago. And uh, after that, they decided to go ahead and give them their own species. They were differentiated enough. Now, Rigida is a larger palm overall than Marii. It's going to have a larger trunk, and these are quite thick in diameter and just tall. They're just an overall larger plant. Um, you can see the old boot scars there, very typical of uh, most, oh, almost all Australian Lipistonas there. So they, Nasmophile is a much bluer palm. It would be noticeable even at an older age. Now, these don't have like a dark green leaflet. They're more of a lighter green. They don't, they, I wouldn't call it blue by any stretch of the imagination, but they, they do kind of have like a lighter green thing going on, kind of a uh, lime green, I guess you could say. And when they're younger, they actually have... Um, like Latania lanteroids, they uh, have red fronds. In fact, they're almost entirely red. It's it's amazing. They uh, up until their almost their entire juvenile stage, they are bright red. They stand out, and they're beautiful in the garden when young. And then when they're older, they obviously create a nice uh, stature. So these are going to be cold hardy to uh, at least nine B, if not into nine A. I've seen them growing in Jacksonville. Uh, and they were not stunted. So I would say like mid or low 20s is at least that it will go down to. So they're probably as cold hardy as Livestone uh, Decora. And they're, they do not they do not grow as fast. I would say they're probably like a 5 out of 10 on the growing scale as far as speed for palms. 10 being the fastest growing palm. Like take a feta elata, 1 being um, Pseudophenix Ekmanii. So it's somewhere right in the middle. They, you know, they're, it's, it's not... If you give them a plenty of water and fertilizer, they will kind of speed up a little bit. But they're definitely worth the grow. Um, so one thing I should note, note is that it does have a flower bract going on, but there is no seed. It went necrotic. Uh, the Australian botanist John Dow, uh, I want to say 10, 15 years ago, did a paper on how Australian Livestonas are going from dioecious to monoecious. Now what that means is that they're going from having both male and female flowers on the bracts to having either male or female. And as a result, most Australian Livestonas don't seed uh, outside of habitat or in Australia. Either there's not the pollinator is not present or there's just not enough of them around to really pollinate. So, um, or any sort of pollinator being present for that matter. But uh, the, the seed of this palm is uh, pretty normal size. It's just a round, maybe a little bit less than a centimeter in width. And they grow, the, the, the way that they would grow, you would want to germinate them, be just like a palmetto. They, you want, they want a lot of heat, well draining with a lot of water as well. So you don't want to leave them in a, like a soggy mix uh, even on high heat, they can rot easily when younger. But when they're older, they can. You can see these are actually being. Uh, these are planted in like a trough here. It's like two feet down. There's some cap rock or some limestone, and uh, they're loving it. Their roots are flaring out. That's a sign. This is a very healthy palm, and I'm happy that whoever planted these did them well. Unlike some of the other plantings around town, there's uh, other the other unnamed Livestona that I. Uh, showed everyone uh, in downtown Venice that this I, I don't know what it is because it's probably a hybrid but these are uh, these are doing so much better I imagine it's a different company that probably cares about um, you know its plants actually surviving more than a few months so you can see here now we're a little bit closer to the road 
no more loud trucks. But, you know, they do have quite a nice symmetrical stature about them. And uh, not a lot of leaf litter. They are, because they're a slower grower, they're not going to drop a ton of fronds. And they tend not to hold them. When they drop low, they'll just kind of drop off. So they don't hold them like palmetto does. Um, now, these here, those palmettos are trimmed. I was trying to find an untrimmed palmetto, but there isn't really one in the picture here. It's getting near sunset. But I want to get closer to the Livisona decors. I'm not going to get on the road here. You won't be able to hear me. But if we get closer, you can see how droopy those leaflets are there versus... Although these aren't, you know, it's called rigida, but they're, the leaflets are more upright. They're especially up top. They almost are, are almost exactly like a palmetto. They're fairly... They get a little bit cost of palmate, not as much as a palmetto, but they, but it does, it is there. So um, these really are underused, underutilized palms, in my opinion, in the U.S. Uh, I don't think they need to be like commonplace everywhere, but they're definitely worth getting if you're growing in Zone Nine because they're cold hardy. They handle high heat and low heat as well. Uh, they, they'll grow pretty much anywhere Livestone or Decor does. And uh, they kind of grow in that, that area uh, close to where Carpentaria grows. Um, actually close to where Foxtails grow as well. They just happen to be a little bit more cold hardy. So let me pan right there. So now, now the sun's out a little bit better. You can kind of see the color of the leaflets. But they can handle the uh, heavier water that we get here in Florida in the summer. And they can also handle a lot of the drought. So these will grow well in Phoenix areas like Phoenix and LA, as well as areas like Miami. These do perfectly fine there. Previously, I made a video about Livestone Origida, and it was about one that was about three feet of wood, looked kind of stunted. I think it just kind of was a bad, it just wasn't well grown to begin with, but these are very well grown. They, they look great here. I was very, like I said, I was very excited to find these, and um, they transplant really well, which is another good thing, you know, like, as opposed to a Bismarck where one this size would take six months to properly root prune and you know get going and transplant to another area. So you decide you plant it and you, don't, you want it somewhere else, you can dig it up pretty easily. Uh, that's kind of the advantage of Livestona over uh, Sables. They just don't have that, uh, that tricky root structure. So like I said, if you want to, you want to germinate these, um, high heat, good drainage, lots of water, and uh, you will get some really cool looking red uh, strap leaflets coming up after a while. So, anyways, that's going to be about it for uh, Livestona rigida, supposedly, possibly Marii. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you enjoy look, talking about seeing videos on tropical plants and see, want to see more in the future, consider subscribing, hit that bell notification when I do go live or when I do put up a video. And uh, if you have any questions about this, the Livestona rigida Marii comp nasmophila complex, Leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I guys and gals as soon as I can. And thanks for watching.